Sonia and Sasha, for real. You're listening to Live, uh, Greenbank Live on Live FM. This is the Sonia and Sasha for Real show, and we have an absolute treat. It's been a very political show today, hasn't it, Sasha? Because uh-huh. we've, we've been talking politics with yes, um, our, our friend Sheba. We've had the quiz at the start of the show where I quizzed you about Biden and the other bloke. Um, and I have <laughs> still no not- idea. <laughs> And now we thought we'd do something a little bit different and we'd get a young person's point of view because you and I are 23 and a half, so that's getting a bit old. So I think we need to get a young person's point of view. And I happened to meet this amazing young man the other day when I was invited to a Zoom. I didn't have to stalk this guest. Did you go to a Zoom party? I heard of. I was invited to a Zoom party. I love it. From some pre- some students that I'd spoken to a year ago. And they invited me to a Zoom party. And then I, I said to this lovely gentleman, what do you study? And he said, international politics. And I was like, right, you need to come on to the Sonia and Sasha for Real show and tell us all about your politics. So can everyone please <laughs> go crazy for Marcus Napolitano. Woo! Welcome to the show. Hey, Marcus. First of all, you love your name. Love, love, hey. love your name. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope you're all doing well. Oh, and the fact that you're studying international <laughs> politics in scares Australia. Me. Scares me. Scares me. Don't know uh, anything about it. And <laughs> there is never a better time in history that you could study something because not only are you studying it, but you're learning it and thinking it and breathing it every single day with what's going on in Australia. Yep. I know it's such a diverse subject and as you said, like you are living and breathing it daily. Like you don't even have to go to a tutorial to learn um, this subject. You are literally in it day and night, sleeping or alive. You are there. You don't need to do a class. You just watch the Dan Andrews little um, things on on, um, on Sunday morning and you go, my tutorial is done. <laughs> do you know what I love? I've been watching the memes um, on, on right. social media and they've got, um, you know, a history of 2020 and the volume is like, you know, thousands and thousands of pages that you have to study when you get to university. Poor old <laughs> poor, poor was, um, history students studying Twenty when they get down and when we get down the track a little bit, oh. it happened. We had a bit on that year, bit on, yeah, a bit going on, a bit going on. Now tell us, a bit what on, yeah, made that's you right. Get into politics and want to study it. Well, I know this is going to probably sound a bit weird, but um, nothing's I weird. It's twenty twenty, really Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually a bit um, intrigued by the leadership um, spills that in the Labor Party between Rudd, Gillard, Rudd that really got me involved into wanting to understand a bit more about our political system. Yeah. And I just couldn't come to understand how our Prime Minister changed. It seemed like on a daily occurrence back then. Yeah. but um, And even back with the Liberal Party on how that changed consistently. And so that really made me interested to get to know politics, get to know what I'm living in, who governs me and who has control over me mm. um, as, as a way of just going about life and getting to know why I'm like, what is leading me around the world to do the things that I am? Well, it's the government and who are the politicians and that's politics for you. Wow. And you've, you've certainly mm. lived. How old are you, Marcus? I'm 18. Okay, so you've certainly lived a very unique time in history of Australian politics with the, the, you know, like it's almost like from right when you would have probably been able to understand it, you would have been changing prime ministers and it's been such a big topic. Whereas for years before that, you know, you it, you know we had one prime minister for years and it never even changed. So certainly it's it's been something different for you. Tell us, what do you think about what's going on with American politics right now? I mean, that's another crazy um, thing. I know. American politics is just uh, so different here to Australian politics. And you think Australian politics is really, really, really bad. Well, just take a look at America. That is a completely (laughs) different story. I think when you have to consider um, a politics in America right now, you have to consider the pandemic. This is a country that is on the brink of collapse. They are fighting for their lives and it has to happen within a presidential election year. And the discourse between um, politics there compared to Australia, whereby we don't have a businessman running uh, to be our prime minister, there you can be a businessman or a, a, a singer and Kim Kardashian's husband. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is 
really doesn't matter who you are there. You can become the president of the United States. Here, we're more ingrained in having some sort of a political um, background in that. But there, it's just completely different in the way that they're going about their political arena and the discourse that goes about that. We think that we're bad here in the way that we insult each other, Labor, Liberal, Greens, etc. There, it's actually that what they're trying to do is they're trying to find something against you that you would have done way back when you were a teenager and they're trying to put it against you and label you as whatever it may be so it's it's really 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 controversial there compared to what it is here but it seems like that trump can get away with anything like what he's he has a list of of long things that he's done back back in the day of back in the day and it's kind of like he has rules for him versus other people they've they've said one particular thing back when they were 20 and now they're completely labeling it with him whereas he seems to be able to get away with a lot more that's just what i've been able to see what do you think about that i do i think you know he is able to get a lot um get around a lot of things and not be that accountable and transparent and it's probably because of the system in how it's run there you know they do have a separation of powers they have the congress they have the judiciary but here our prime minister is also a member of parliament and you've got to understand that so they're constantly accountable to the parliament and that's where all members of um that represent us in electorate sit and so forth of that nature and he's accountable he has to do question time every single day that the parliament sits the president doesn't have to do that. He can veto any bill that he wants. He can ba basically put down an executive order like building a wall using military funds at any of his, at, at his discretion. So what it goes to show is the role of the president, head of government and head of state is completely different to something like here where you're prime minister is just the head of government and yes with that you can get away with a lot because the president he's the commander in chief he's the head of the american army he's the head of america you're going to be able to get away with a lot so what do you, because i think probably this is a personal thing because i tend to just not really understand the whole system but how so I'm looking for the comedy in politics, you know, and I think in yeah. Australian media, a lot of the media outlets go for that. They, they show us the funniest, stupidest, craziest, you know, parts of these candidates. But what do you think of both, you know, people? Do they have some decent policies behind them? Do you know what, what, what do you think about Biden? And then what do you think about Trump? I think Biden is someone that um, has had 40 years experience or greater in politics. So he's very knowledgeable and he has some really good policies, progressive policies as well, but also liberal policies. Um, and they not only address centrally the economy, but they address other issues such as climate change, race divisions and foreign affairs and trade and so forth of that nature. Um, Trump is basically centered around the economy yeah. and that's where his policies lie central to the economy so in an American sort of sphere the economy means everything because the economy means power and it means maintaining that superpower status mm -hmm. so Trump as a businessman is taking his businessman knowledge in in you know blatant terms and putting it into a political scene which seems really 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 strange but the economy in america somewhat is did improve from trump employment did rise but it all came crushing down just at the start of this year so I reckon in regards to Biden, his policies are more broad, but Trump is centered in the economy with his policies. And that's all. Do you think a businessman can run a country? Like properly? Like, you know, like you uh, look, when they say a oh, business, you know, if you can, he can run successful businesses, obviously he's made some money. He's had that you can put those same um, values to run a country. I don't think you can because a country isn't centered around the economy. I think we've come to learn that during the coronavirus pandemic, you need to address the health issue before you address the economic issue. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different aspects to the sovereignty and to the composition of a country, foreign affairs, trade, 
the the domestic economy, um, health, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think you can be a businessman and know what, you know, how to cure coronavirus and, and so forth of that nature. Being a politician is an occupation whereby you're able to obtain advice from every single like source and knowledgeable area and be able to have the courage to make that decision. A businessman is going to make a decision based on what's good for them in an economic sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can necessarily run a country and be a businessman and run it correctly, if that sort of makes sense. Mm. Or have empathy for any of those other really important things like education and health and you know, senior, you know, citizens and all of those things that, you know, take compassion and empathy and understanding, you know, to, to, that's um, right. Yeah. A sense of even being seen by the, you know, the president and being understood on any kind of level. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? So what do you think now, Marcus, do you think that um, young people are, are more aware of politics and do you think that they're more into it now than, than before? Because I've got to say, I don't really, I've had not really had any conversations with young people about politics, and certainly no, no one as knowledgeable as you about the whole deal. And- Look, what I think with that is, I think youth of our current generation is centered upon taking politics on singular issues. So you're going to have that individual that is an activist for climate change. You're going to have that individual that is an activist for Black Lives Matter. You're going to have probably an individual that is centred upon those true things, for example. But as I've said, politics is more broad than that. And you've got to take into consideration all different things. So, you, you know, with the issue of climate change, it's very complicated. And I don't think you can just say, right, we've got to reduce zero net emissions straight away. No, well, why don't you make have a strategy for a sense to slowly reduce emissions? Perhaps that's a way of going forward. It's so diverse and complicated. So I don't think the youth of our current day necessarily know politics um, fully because they're so concentrated on singular issues that you need to take in a broad amount of understandings into different areas in saying, well, if you're going to tackle this singular issue, how's it going to affect the other features? Is it, if you tackle climate change, is it going to affect health? Is it going to affect education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I would like to see the youth of our current um, age sort of a bit more broadly focusing from one singular issues to other issues as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah, I, I'm so fascinated with you, Max. I think I could talk to you for hours because I just I love that you've got this um, really knowledgeable way of, of looking at politics but also having such a fresh mind with it as well, like, you know, having and being able to see all points of view and also it's almost like I can feel the vibe that you really actually care about the country and care about the world and it's not just about the money and it's not just about that but how is how are all these people's decisions going to really affect us how do you think um the american election is actually going to affect australia well i think the american election is going to affect us greatly both domestically um in a domestic sense and in a foreign sense you've got to understand australia is in a position yes we're an island by itself not connected but we are in an area known as the Asia Pacific region, whereby we have to choose right now whether we're gonna stick with China or where we're gonna go with America. And so America is pushing us so much to get on its side and to be its sort of gopher in the area, in tackling China, in tackling to ensure that the Asia Pacific region and especially areas such as the South China Sea and so forth are American centralized and are liberally, liberal democratically protected. So it's going to have a massive impact on the way that we see our political sphere, both domestically and internationally here in Australia, because Scott Morrison is great mates and buddies with, um, Trump over there, if Biden gets in, well, ScoMo's going to have to change his his mm. tune a bit. I don't think you've ever seen an Australian prime minister attack an American president. And the reason for that is we fear them. We are their gophers. We're their little minions. So 
you're going to have to adapt um, to any sort of American president, whether it be um, Trump or Biden, because we rely on them as our protector. They rely on us as their gopher in the region. So it's going to greatly change our dynamic here in the way that we see politics how we're going to address issues such as climate change and, and the coronavirus and this global recession that we're facing at the moment. And the, the decisions that an American president makes are decisions that are going to affect Australia. There's no doubt about that. Do you know what I feel like when you're explaining that? I feel like, you know, in primary school, when you everyone picks on this one kid, not me personally, but, you know, everyone picks on this one kid or, or you know, yeah, you, you gang up on somebody and then um, your little friend that you've got that you gang up on everyone, all of a sudden they have a day off and you have to suck up the other people, right, just to play with someone, right? That's what ScoMo's going to have to do. He's like, oh, he's been going hardcore Biden, hardcore Biden, if Biden wins, he's going to have to go up to him and go, so do you want to be my friend now? You know what I mean? Do you want to play? Because uh, we're in this thing together now. <laughs> you know, and all right. of that other stuff we said, I'm really sorry about that. But let's <laughs> come on, will you play with me? You know, <laughs> and so as true. much as we want to have a, have a bit of a laugh at it, it's actually that, you know, you have to put your tail between your legs and go, better make friends with this guy now because I haven't got anyone else to play yeah. with, you oh. know. Okay. That is a, that's just that's a true assessment, Sash. That's it is, is it a, do you think Biden will get in, Marcus? Look, I think if we take into consideration the impact of this pandemic at the moment, mm. um, this has changed everything. I would have probably said that Trump would have had a chance if this coronavirus pandemic mm. didn't happen in America, but it has a liberated that country mm. um they're about to enter into their winter so their second wave is going to be well i don't even know if they've even finished their first wave yeah. but it's um sec- it's it's just the wave it's a, it's a tsunami, <laughs> it's a tsunami, yeah, the tsunami that just keeps going but i think biden does have a good chance but again that goes to the thing we didn't think that trump was going to get in in 2016 the polls showed that Hil- hillary clinton um was going to get in she got the popular vote she got three million more votes than Trump. And yet Trump got more electoral college votes and became president of the United States. So I think you got to really look at not the percentage and the amount of um, support for Biden that you constantly see on social media, which is great. You got to take a look at the electoral college because that's the main thing. Is he going to have enough electoral college votes in order to secure the presidency? And that's the really concerning thing. But I do think in this pandemic time, he might just scrape over. You know, oh I've watched heaps of documentaries on how they do this voting and how they work it out. And I still don't get it. Like, I just don't <laughs> get it. How can you have more votes and not win? I just and, and I've watched heaps of stuff to educate myself, but it's just like I go, oh, I don't get it. Mm. Sort of, don't have yeah. you... So you and I have both watched stuff and I come out going, I don't know, I don't understand. It's so confusing. It's, it's confusing. really confusing. And then, you add, in, and then you add in things like the Cambridge Analytica, you know, social media oh. equation and all of that sort of thing from the last election and that's not around anymore. It's just so interesting, isn't it? Mm. For someone who's, who is is apolitical the right way of saying I don't care about it, I don't really understand. <laughs> I'm talking about but do, hey that's a good one a political mm, this is a fascinating mm. time and marcus i don't think You're i've ever had politics explained so brilliantly and so in such a cool way i'm real i'm gonna i'm gonna go away now and find out what an electoral college is and i want to find yes. out all i'm in the south <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm on it i'm excited about politics and, and if you can do that then you're a champion marcus <laughs> oh thank you and thank you, you very but, much can I just say, the minute I see um, ScoMo suck up to Biden, I'm just going to be thinking yeah, about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the way we're, like, whipping these names out. ScoMo and Biden. ScoMo yeah. and Trump. You know, uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much. So much. That. You're That's, an absolute delight. Thank you. Yeah, really, thank we, you for having me on the show. We're at, we're, so we're at the end of the show, Sasha. I can't believe we've just had the best politics today. We've had, we've lo- have, we, have you we learned, learned a lot? Yes. Have you well, learned I've learned so much. Yeah, so have I. What I mean, what, it'll go out my head by tomorrow morning. Don't ask me any questions nah, or quiz me on no. it. <laughs> we'll have some good discussions about this tomorrow. So we had the lovely Sheba Simpson on today. Thank Aww. you so much, Sheba. We've had the incredible Marcus Napolitano, a young person who's studying international politics, who just is 
just brilliant at describing what's going on in the world and how smart is this young man? Like if, if our mm. Australian politics are in the hands of young people like that, then I'm cool with that. Yes, I I'm was cool thinking that, that too. I completely agree. Yeah. That's so, what you want the future to be in politics. But a big show next week, which we will uh, talk, tell you all about on our social media during the week. Have a great week, Sash. Can't wait to see. I think I might actually get to see you. I, think, well, I know. We can actually maybe hug. I know. I know. We, we will. Hug. Yeah. Hug. <laughs> well, we'll have to glove up. Glove anyway, up. have the best week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Sonia and Sasha, Brimbank Live on Live FM. Sonia and Sasha, for real.